for the camera. Mirror images. The most common, the most common chiral isomer, stereo isomer, that we find is limonene. Now, limonene is amazing because limonene, we find it in everyday life and it's got some very similar uses. Pretty much, this is going to be oranges and lemons. Okay? Now, limonene, the structure, you have one chiral carbon and they are mirror images from each other. Now, up to A level, you just worked on how to find a chiral center. So a chiral center is a carbon that has four different groups. Now, this is normally very easy to find, but always pay attention to note that you might have symmetry. In this case, you are not seeing the hydrogen. Okay, so the hydrogen is there. And because the hydrogen is there, the carbon would have four completely different groups. Mainly, the first carbon is the same, but the second carbon, one has a double bond, and the, only one, the other one only has single bonds. This small minor difference makes oranges and lemons smell very different, okay? Taste, then there are other chemicals. Yes? Which one? It has two hydrogen. So the question is this carbon, right? So let me return them. A. They're the same. So that only has three bonds. Because the double bond only we only count as one steric number. Okay? It needs to have four completely different groups. No. Remember, whenever you have a double bond, you get the trigonal planar. And trigonal planars, there's no stereochemistry there. Because trigonal planar, all you need to do is flip it. And you'll get the same structure. So, if we recall, you can have constitutional isomers, stereo isomers, which for you is the geometric cis trans, and then we have the mirror images. Now, normally, these are not a problem, but it's not the first time where scientists have managed to fuck everything up. Mainly, the biggest problem was with thalidomide. I think it was thalidomide, no. It was a drug, I'll check the name later on, that was given for, for mothers who were pregnant and if they couldn't sleep. In fact, one of the isomers was very good to stop nausea, whereas the other one was very good in destroying the embryo. And hundreds of thousands, and in some articles, it is actually millions of babies had died and were aborted by mistake just by using this drug. So, what are enantiomers? Enantiomers are when you have two molecules that are perfect mirror images to each other. Okay, so here you have carbon, methyl, bromine, and hydrogen. Carbon, methyl, bromine, and hydrogen. And you have a perfect mirror image, mirror image of it on the left. Now, again, 
whilst showing you the toys, normally try to build the two structures, okay? To be honest, up till here, you've done. So it's the naming that's gonna be a bit. The naming is not gonna be nice unless you practice. So, when you have four different groups, you will have a stereo center, okay? When you have four different groups, you will have a stereo center. And this would be an asymmetric carbon. Pretty much what this means is not symmetrical. No center of symmetry. If there is a center of symmetry, okay, then there is a mirror image. If there is a mirror image, then you don't have a chiral carbon. And that would be an, an achiral structure. Okay? Now, it's very easy to see them when they are drawn in colors. And when you know you're looking for, so for one of them, when you're doing organic chemistry, you might very easily miss them. Because normally, we use carbon bonds, and the carbons would have two hydrogen groups. But every time you have a functional group, check how many different groups that carbon has gotten. If it has one functional group, normally, that will imply it has some sort of stereochemistry. So, methane, you have many centers of symmetries. Chloromethane, again, you have three centers of symmetries. Dichloromethane, you would have two. Um, bromochloromethane, you have one. And then, if you were to have bromochlorofluoromethane, at that point, that would be a chiral structure. It is a structure that has no mirror images. So, how to tell which enantiomer you've got? Now, to do this, normally you require a picture of the structure, if not the structure itself. And the best way to do this is to get an X-ray crystal structure. And these are immensely useful. I personally have never had the pleasure of doing one, but I've seen quite a few, okay? Mainly for organic chemistry, unless you have a very, very, very pure compound, these are not worth it. But these are one of the best and most out of the easiest ways how to get a structure, a picture of your compound. Another way would be using a polarimeter. Now, this is much cheaper, much easier, but it will not give you the image of the structure. This just tells you whether your molecule will rotate light to the left or right to the right. Now, do you know what a polarimeter is? No. So, light, normally, if I have a point, it will go in all directions. I'm pretty sure you will be doing this in a different module, but let's just give you a quick recap. So, what the polarimeter does, it only lets light through if it goes in just one direction. Okay, so that means that it only lets light that is going up. Now, once this light goes through a polarimeter, it can either shift to the right or it can shift 
to the left. The angle of the shift is actually going to be proportional to concentration, but it is an angle that is indicative of one specific molecule. So if you've got the plus, it might rotate clockwise, the minus, it will rotate anti-clockwise. And they have an equal angle of rotation. Now, we have to pay attention. This angle, it's very easy to say it's 60 degrees. But that might as well be 420 or 780. Because the reality is you can't say that it rotated just once. Could have gone. Okay, that would be the same. But this is something that I'm not sure if you do it in organic or analytical chemistry. So for now, let's just skip it and stop here. The sentence here is very important. Sign of rotation does not tell you anything about the absolute configuration. Meaning, up till now, you might know that you have an antiomers. You might be able to actually find which antiomers you've got, but it tells you absolutely nothing about the configuration. Okay? So, what will? You will actually need to see the structure itself. So, the polarimeter, the way it will work is this. And I'm going to explain it briefly. Um, I'm, I will check with organic two and with analytical chemistry to see if you're going to do it there as well. If not, I will come back to it next week with some examples. If yes, I'll just stop here. So you've got an alpha angle of rotation, okay? That is temperature and concentration dependent, okay? Then, when you use a polarimeter, you're gonna get a value. This value is gonna be the value you get from the apparatus. Okay, now, then you have to look at the concentration. And the concentration is going to be the length, oh, sorry, the concentration will be in grams per milliliter, not moles, it's grams per milliliter. And the length, it is the decimeter. So the length is 10 centimeters. This way, then, you can find the specific rotation. For example, here you have 1 being plus 23.1, the other is minus 23.1. In fact, if they are going to be a 50-50 mixture, okay, if they are going to be a 50-50 mixture, then what you're going to get is a situation where it's going to be a situation where you're actually going to have zero rotation. Why? Because if Joey pulls to the right and Martyr pulls to the left, overall, they're going to get stuck where they were. Okay? Now, I don't find myself as a boring person. So please, no taking naps in my class. So here you have two different compounds. Again, as I'm, I'm explaining before, if one is minus 23.1, it's an antimer will be plus 23.1. Changing some groups can even change the sign, okay? Changing some groups can even change the sign. And adding a base, so getting from the carboxylic acid 
to its salt will change drastically. So these are all items that the sign itself tells you nothing, okay? There are some interesting properties you would want to consider and you might want to, to delve, in, delve a little bit deeper, but the sign itself tell you nothing. So if it is going to be negative, then you know it's negative. If it's positive, it's positive, but the sign itself tells you nothing. So how do we name these? And for me, this is the fun part. Today, we're just gonna speak a little bit about how to name them. I think we'll speak about how to name these, and next week we'll actually work a few examples between the, the, this lesson and the next. I'm gonna give you a tutorial. The tutorial will have at least one week to work it out. I'll send you the answers, and then we'll see if there are any problems in class. If you do have problems about the tutorial, this goes for the ones at home. Please do come here, okay? If you do have problems about the tutorial, please do come here. It's much easier to use a board and explain in person than it is in explaining in class uh, over a laptop, okay? So, the Khan in Gold Prello RS nomenclature. It might sound like a complicated name. It's where just three guys who work together, okay? So, what you need to do is label all of the substituents. Starting at point of attachment, according to the sequence rules. So, what is the sequence loop rules? If you look at the periodic table, each atom has an atomic number. So here we will do the same thing. We're gonna give each atom a, its value. It's an atomic number and value. So carbon is six, oxygen is eight, hydrogen is one, bromine would be 35, maybe. Chlorine is 17. So every value will have a number. And we're gonna assign the values to each position. So we will order them by atomic number, meaning hydrogen, iodine, bromine, and methyl. We're gonna first consider only the atom directly attached to your chiral carbon. So this will be iodine has the highest priority. Bromine has the second highest. Third would be the carbon. Fourth is the hydrogen. If you have the first carbon, which is the same, okay, so let's say, this is your chiral carbon. Huh? What do you mean? Yes. And so no. You look at what's attached to it. Okay? So. This carbon has a carbon. The other one doesn't. So this would be priority group two. Okay? A and B. Highest and lowest. Now, in fact, here we are seeing a few examples. So, I'm not sure if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see the groups. So the chiral center, it's this one. Let me mark them. Okay, so let's see, this. let's see example number one. In example number one, 
you have carbon versus a hydrogen. Therefore, the carbon has a higher mass, therefore it will win. In example number two, hydrogens only, hydrogens only, so we go back to the sulfur. But the sulfur has a hydrogen, the sulfur has a carbon. Carbon has a higher mass, therefore the carbon will win. Now, here in example number three, it was two, what you have is something a bit different. Because you do have an oxygen, but the oxygen is not joined to the carbon closest to your chiral carbon, meaning first we have to analyze those two hydrogens. Because there is one carbon, because there is one carbon attached to that carbon, to the adjacent carbon, to the alpha carbon, do you know the terms alpha, beta, gamma for carbons? So the alpha carbon, it has a beta carbon attached to it. It has two actually, and two beta carbons will beat one beta carbon. So this is the alpha, this is the beta. Alpha. Beta and beta. For the last one, and this is why we can't use the mass. Okay, for the last one, the alpha carbon has only one beta carbon attached to it. That beta carbon has three bromines. So mass-wise, it's going to be very, very heavy. Okay? Mass-wise, it's going to be very, very heavy. But the second one, okay, has two beta carbons. So those beta carbons are going to be Okay, are going to be the difference. And this is what we mean by first atom of difference. Okay, what we mean here is you just keep on checking until you find the first atom that is going to be different. Yes, of course. Sir. What happens if you have multiple? Sir? Yes, then. Hello. Can you go back a bit and re-explain number four? Actually, I didn't really understand. Okay. Um, so. Let's say you have a carbon. Okay. So the chiral carbon no, blue, Yadik. Yes. So there is a chiral carbon there. Now, there are three groups. Of course, the highest priority and the lowest priority are easy. A and D. But there are two carbons. Green and orange. Now, green and orange, they have, they must have different priorities. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna see what they are attached to. So orange is attached to another carbon, but so is green. All right, all right. <laughs> oh, okay, no, never mind. Orange is going to be attached to another carbon, but green is not, it's attached to a yellow. So when we compare the yellows, that will end up having this carbon as priority group B and this carbon as priority group C. 
even though this has a higher mass, the priority group is lower. Okay, okay thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay. Now, anyone, even in class, if there is something you don't understand, ask. Okay? If there's something you don't you don't understand, ask. Sure. Sure. Yes? Uh, but uh, that carbon is yellow, but but uh, that's not carbon, that's hydrogen. Like, are they, like, what, what did you mean by two carbons are yellow? If I heard so, correctly. We are comparing the orange carbon and the green carbon. So both of those carbons have got one extra carbon attached to them, which is the red one. Then we went to the yellow. The orange carbon has a carbon, whereas the green carbon at this point has a hydrogen. So we are going to compare the yellow atoms. And in the yellow atoms, we have one which is a carbon and one which is a hydrogen. Therefore, the orange one will have a higher priority. Okay. Sir. Yes? If on carbon C, the yellow atom was a bromine, then that would make it um, B and instead of C. Yes. So okay. let's take the same scenario. For sin how do dimia? The kim do na malaya na. Sorry, sir. Le le le, we kalik ali at night. Let's do it like this. Let's say that was bromine. So now, okay, we are comparing, we're not even comparing, well, carbon with carbon, carbon with bromine. So now bromine has a higher mass. If the bromine has a higher mass, then that would be the highest priority. So this would be B and C, okay? So just by changing one atom, you change the priority. Yes? Yes. And if instead of bromine, you had CH3, but I will always sound what it's test to call. Okay. Then it will end up going to the third structure, which are the same. So then it would go to the red one, okay? To the red carbon. And the red carbon, one has three hydrogens, the other one has three bromines. So the three bromines would then win, okay? Now listen, I will give you in the tutorial sheets. Some easy ones to start with and always getting harder. These are much easier when you start working them. Don't worry if you don't get them first time round. This year I had third year students who got these wrong. I cried in the inside because I had to teach it, teach them, teach. I had to teach these to third years, okay? And we are very pressed for time, but don't worry, practice. And a piece of advice. First and foremost, you've got Christmas time, use it wisely, okay? Especially with COVID and so on, there are no parties. But do not leave these for the last month, as last week, huh? last month, because you won't get them. Especially because what we're gonna start doing after the February session, the February exams will literally be will literally be focusing on stereochemistry. 
how to change stereochemistry, how to use stereochemistry for reactions, so on and so forth. So please pay attention. So multiple bonds. The last rule will be if you have multiple bonds. Now, multiple bonds are easy because take the bond, okay? See what it is attached to and open it up. And we call these phantom atoms, okay? We call these phantom atoms. So there, we'll just add the carbon and the carbon. Why? Because the double bond is between two carbons. If you have a carbonyl, that will be an oxygen and the carbon, okay? So pretty much what you're doing is opening up the double bonds or triple bonds and write what they are attached to. I can assure you that this in reality is very rare, but even though it's very rare, the proportion of questions that come out in the exam is inflated compared to reality. So if I want to test your true knowledge, this will come out. Now, if you have triple bonds, it's the same thing, but instead of doing it once, you do it twice. And once this is covered, then you can simply do the same priorities as before to see what you have. In fact, in limonene, that's why the double bond doesn't matter. Because when we are actually assigning priority, what happens? You open up the double bond and you're going to get a specific priority. Once the priorities are assigned, put the lowest priority at the back. So let's also switch on the camera. Let's say we have this structure, okay? Now we're gonna do it once for those in class and once for those at home. So the red, let's assign the red, the red pop as the lowest priority group. So you assign it behind the atom. So now you have one, two, three. And see if they're gonna be clockwise or anti-clockwise, A, B, C. Remember, it's going to have to be A, B, C, okay? If they are clockwise, it's gonna be R. If they are anti-clockwise or counterclockwise, it will be S. So let's actually see. No, 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 no. You've already assigned the positions, right? A, B, C, D. So D. Clockwise? Counterclockwise. Depending on which group they are. Because when you put when you put the atom at the back, if you have three, it's like going to planar. And it's like going to planar, so you're gonna have, let's say, A, B, C. So that will be. Okay. Well, John, you, you assigned the priority groups. So for the ones at home, the structure I will be putting the red behind. So now I have a trigonal planar. Do you agree? When you look at it, you have a trigonal planar. And because you've already assigned the groups, then you can see if something is gonna be clockwise or anti-clockwise. So, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Now, what we'll do is this, okay? Because this is where I wanted to stop. I will send you a worksheet, tutorial. The tutorial will include these with it, okay? Now, 
What I want you to do for now is not to name them. Naming, we're going to do it next week. In fact, next week, we won't be using the PowerPoint, OK? We will be working just examples so that we will make sure that you understood this. OK? The book is brilliant. Now, something I wanted to ask. Because with you, I'm using PowerPoints. Normally, I don't use PowerPoints. Normally, I use the board. Okay? Whether it's the whiteboard on the laptop or a whiteboard, a real whiteboard, normally I use the board. I think we've had four lessons up till now, and I think the flow was very good. So we're doing quite a lot of material, and I'm happy about that. But for me, rather than the material, okay, it is, are you understanding? The tutorials will actually be very important from that aspect. But if you would like me to ditch the PowerPoint, give you the PowerPoint anyway, okay? So you can take a look at them after the lecture or before the lecture, it's up to you. But you would want me to do a lesson as if I'm in sixth form, where I just use the board as I used it before, and I just write, then do it in me. Even if I say five to ten students send me to do that, I will dish the PowerPoint and do it. For me, it's a bit easier other than following a PowerPoint. Okay. And for you, it might be a little bit better because it's bridging between what you had what you used to do in sixth form and here. I don't mind, but do tell me. I haven't received any feedback, neither positive. More important for me, negative feedback, sir, I was understanding, but I'm giving you the option, okay? By the way, do not hesitate. I will not take it against you. I might remember your name for the exam, but some people are already effed about it. For example, some class reps. Hello. But, um, so do voice your concerns. If you want, I'm sorry, Anne. But if you want, speak to Anne, and then can speak to me, okay? So if you want to be anonymous. Yeah, yeah, it's no problem, Anne. guys. No, that's her job. That's not, it's, it's no problem. Job. Sorry? I said it's no problem, I don't mind. Okay. I mean, even if you do at the moment, I already sent them to you now. But if you have a problem, speak to me. I know this is not an easy course, this module. I don't want anyone to fail, but some people will fail. So please do tell me and I will help you. I'd rather help you now than get to do a paper in summer because I'm not paid neither to do the papers nor to correct your resets. So if I can do them once only, I'd appreciate. Okay, but that I will leave that up to you. I mean, listen. You're adults now, you're all 18 or nearly 18. So if you have a problem, ask me and I'll help you. So let me show you, let me stop. <laughs> Can I just ask something before you uh, hang up? Um, about the worksheet, do we still 